for everything. Because that is who you are, Jesus. You are Lord of all. You are Lord of all creation. You are Lord of all of our hearts. You are Lord of all of our lives. You are Lord of our family, of our communities, of our work, of our household, of our church. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Jesus, you are the lover of our souls. And Lord, we just invite you into every space that's empty in our lives this morning. And we just ask that you would fill us, Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jesus. Fill us with the love that is so deep, the love that is so wide, the love that is so broad and deep that we cannot understand with our minds, Lord, that we can only deep, truly know in our hearts. So fill our hearts, Lord. Fill the, the emptiness in our lives, Lord, with who you are this morning. We just seek you, Jesus, and all that you have for us. Have your way amongst us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, it's great to gather and celebrate Jesus and, and uh, be a family at Salt here this morning. Thanks for coming, guys. Um, and as our, um, our worship team steps down, we might just get our, uh, those who are doing the offering to um, walk around. We know many people give online, but uh, whatever you have to give um, back to the Lord into Salt, um, we know that God is going to bring a hundredfold in people's lives. So give joyfully, give thankfully to a great God uh, this morning. And um, just a couple of announcements, not too many this morning. Uh, we know Meg and Peter are away having uh, just a break and so we just, we, we think of them uh, and we just, yeah, we just really know that um, that's a much needed break for them to be away with friends and to get a bit of warmth up, up in uh, Queensland. Um, so they'll be returning next weekend uh, back here and obviously sometime before that. So a big thank you to uh, the Lions Bombardary, the Lions Club in Bombardary um, and their 10 volunteers. Um, they came out on Sorry Day and they ran a barbecue um, with us at Salt. So that was awesome to see that community connection too. It was really good. That's a, that's a great thing. One of the great things I love about Salt is that, um, you know, it's a kingdom isn't it we're building God's kingdom and uh, we just want to invite everyone into that uh, it's not in, in any sense you know it's not just what salt's doing it's what God is doing through our community and God is using salt um, to unite people together uh, under Jesus and that's 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 a real statement of unity uh, and that's something I know that's big on um, uh, the leaders of salt and and not just the leaders but those who serve in salt is uh, to invite people into what Jesus is doing. Uh, you know, to I was just having a conversation uh, this morning, and that you know that Micah six eight that challenge that what does God call us to do? He calls us to live justly, to fight for justice, justice on those who are living in the margins, those who who are you know who are poor, who are homeless, the widows, the broken, um, those who just are just struggling, but to to live justly, but to to walk and to show kindness and mercy, and to walk humbly with your God, and that is uh, the picture of who we want to be to our community. Is that's Jesus? That is the heart of Jesus, and that's the heart of our God. So it's awesome, guys, to see people getting involved um, during the week, because we know that this salt is just our celebration of what God's doing. Uh, on Sunday. It's uh, just a small touch of who we are, but it's an important part of our family and celebrating together. Um, I think it's either Steve or Beck wants to jump up. Steve, is it? Yep. Got the mic down there? Cool. I do want to jump up on the stage because I'm likely to fall and um, humiliate myself. Hey, everybody. 
Um, so just an announcement this morning for parents that are signing their kids into Kids Church. Uh, as you know, it can be a little bit chaotic when we first go in. Because um, sometimes there's lots of kids, lots of parents. So today we're doing something a little bit different. So make sure if you're a kid, you're listening. Make sure if you're a parent, you're listening. When we go in, kids will go this way to the right and sit on the floor ready for a story. And that's all the kids. No one up to the big table. Everyone goes over to this side on the floor. And then parents go over to the other side to the big table and they can sign their kids in. So we should have all the parents on this side, all the kids on that side, and it's going to run so smoothly. It's like, oh, it's going to change our life. Okay, thanks, Dave. Good on you, Steve. Let, let's give uh, Steve and all of those who um, work tirelessly every Sunday uh, with our beautiful kids. It's such, such a special and important ministry uh, into our kids' lives and their, into their hearts. So good on you, Steve, and good on you, Beck and Co. So the kids can go out now. And um, I thought before we have our special guest come up and share from God's Word, B, does anyone have anything they want to share? Any good news, any, anything that you would uh, want to praise God for? Any testimony? Just want to open it up. If you've got a big, loud voice, you don't need to be use a scary microphone, but you can come up. Any, anyone like to share anything at all? Well, come on up, B. We'd love you to share. And who was here last Sunday? It wasn't it awesome to hear what Meg had to say about prayer. Um, yeah, su- such an amazing um, word that was, and just hope we know and we pray that uh, God's going to continue that. Amen. Good on you. Thank you. Amen. God is so good. Two sex. Um, I walk around a little bit, so I just don't want to trip. So, um, one more. One more. All right. Good morning, everyone. It was an awesome message last week. Um, I love it when Meg preaches. Actually, I just love all the messages in this church. It's really been um, such um, food, such a blessing to my life. But as the kids go, let's, let's just pray for them. They're our treasures, aren't they? So, Father God, stretch your hand out to them. Let's pray for our kids. This is our generation. This is our... So, Father God, we just bless our kids. We thank you for them, that they are treasures to our lives. We ask that you put your hedge of protection around them. That, Father God, they'd become the best versions of themselves to and through you. That you would open the eyes of their understanding and flood them with light. That they would always know from this age, in every age, every time, stage of their life, they'll always know that they are loved, that they are accepted, that they are cherished and they are valuable, not only to us, but to you. So, Father God, we just bless them. We thank you that your plans and purposes towards them will bring them into the place of total delight in every way. In Jesus' mighty name. I love kids. I don't have kids myself, but I have spiritual kids. So, And I'm very honoured. Last, last, um, this week, I went to my first um, grandparents' day, which was really cool since I'm not a grandparent per se. Um, I took Pete and Meg's spot, which was a real honour, um, but it was just great to be there. And I'm looking for my notes. Last week, Meg spoke on, does anybody remember what Meg spoke on? Prayer. What did she say about prayer? Yeah, she was talking about, well, she started off with the Lord's Prayer. I love the Lord's Prayer. We know it, don't we? Let's, let's do what Meg did. Let's say it together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There's some beautiful um, things to say about the, the Lord's Prayer. And this morning was a beautiful start. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Worship you. You are great and mighty. And as we've worshipped together with those most beautiful words, we've worshipped the King of glory. Amen? And it leads us to a place of his kingdom come. There's a scripture, and it's not far from where Meg started last week, in Matthew 6. And it talks about, in verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So we're talking about seeking God first. And I mean, we, we sang that in that song, didn't we? All I need is you. All I need is you. Now, I'm not saying that all those other things in our life aren't important because they are. But I want to, just at the beginning of this message, I just wanted to say that when you put God first in your life, he makes you the best version of everything else you need to be. When you put him as the first, you can become the very best version of a husband or a wife, a parent, a leader, whatever God's called you to excel in in your business. When you put God first, he graces you with the ability to be the very best version of yourself. So it's actually enriching your life to put God first. But I tell you what, it's hard sometimes, isn't it? This world yells at us. It's very loud. It tells us what we should think and do and what's important and not just it. People yell at us, push us, influence us in different areas. But this is a platform where we've just declared also on is you as a number one to seek first him, Jesus. And today, it's not, I've got a whole message here and it's so funny. I woke up this morning and um, God over the last year has really had me on a journey of prayer and really spending time with him. And it has kind of wrecked me in a way in my heart. It's that he just seems to melt off all the, the barnacles of my life. Anybody else got some barnacles in their life? Yeah, he seems to melt off the barnacles in my life and it's a process. I'm a, per, I'm, I'm a work in progress. He melts them off and he just brings me into that place of just total ex receiving his love in such a profound way. And I woke up this morning and I prayed and I was just spending time with God and I just was... I had everything together. I knew I had to get to work to print my message. I had to go and pick somebody up and give somebody else their, you know, uh, I'd do a job for NDIS and I had to get back here and get everything ready. And I thought, all right, I'm going to, I've got to get going. It's a big morning for me. I've got to get going. And the Holy Spirit just said to me, just wait. Just wait a little bit longer. And it was so funny. I just sat in my chair and I just was silent. I just waited on God and he, he brought something to me I'd never seen before. Just a part of a, a story in my life and he related it to like a parable to his love for me. And I'm sitting there and just tears, are, like, tears are dripping off my cheeks. And I'm just sitting there. I just felt oh, so loved, so valued so treasured, such a jewel in his kingdom. And I just was like, oh. It would have been so easy to rush past that moment. Because, you know, Sunday's a big day. Every day's a big day. But it just, it just melted my heart. And so I, might, I said to somebody this morning, I said, I'm a little bit squishy. Does everybody know when you're a little bit squishy? It means when God squeezed on your heart, sometimes just tears. They're not tears of sadness. They're actually tears of delight, tears of joy, tears of... Tears are like when we're overwhelmed. Our, our eyes leak the goodness of God. 
actually, I, I love what um, Mother Teresa says about tears. Tears are, <laughs> they're like a silent prayer of joy, of gratefulness, of thankfulness. And so when you look at me this morning, just think they're tears of joy, and they are. So, but seek first. Seek first. I'm going to read it for you in the Amplified. And I love this. It says, seek first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, it's going to tell you what his kingdom and his righteousness is. His way of doing and being right. The attitude and the character of God. Isn't that cool? We always think these, what does those words mean? It means who he is and how he does things. And all these things, like being a good parent, of being successful or being a great friend and all the things, stuff in life will be added unto you. When you keep your priority on him, he can entrust to you the riches of the earth because then he knows they're not going to take over as priority. We've seen that, haven't they? Some people, you know, God's first and then the riches come along and we know the riches. Actually, God warns us about a few riches in life. The gold, the glory, and they talk about the guys or the girls. Three things in the scriptures is, it warns us about. But when we put God first, he can entrust those things to us. In the, in, the, um, amp, in the Passion, it says it this way. So above all. Above what? Above all. Constantly seek after God's kingdom and his righteousness. And all these less important things, they're important, but they're less important to him than him. Things will be given to you in abundance. I like that too. So how do we seek first his kingdom? Simple, simple words, but they're sometimes hard to live, aren't they? Haven't you found that sometimes the principles of God, they're easy to talk about and hard to do? Prayer is one of those things. How to cultivate a passion for prayer. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time. And we, everybody doesn't have time for prayer. But again, it comes back to this seeking first. So we always go back to places that we love, we're passionate about, and how to cultivate a passion for the presence of God. Because when we actually come to God in prayer, we're coming into, we're having an audience with the King of Kings. The Lord of glory is there to meet you. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm just going to do a quick prayer. Tick. Done. Gets moving. You know what I mean? Tick and flick. Almost what I did this morning instead of stop a little bit longer. Just wait. Just a little bit longer in his presence. And oh, the floodgates open with such a treasure to my heart. So this morning, we're going to be talking about prayer, but I wanted to give a, a couple of examples on different types of prayer. Because when I asked a few people, um, what is the biggest hindrance to prayer? A few people said to me, I don't know what to pray, which is a really good thing. If you don't know what to pray, um, you sometimes don't pray because you're not sure it's right. And before we get into that, I just wanted to say there's no wrong way to pray. <laughs> there's nothing. There's, God hasn't, you're not going to scare God off. He is, is, loves you and he just wants to spend time with you. Whatever that looks like, he's calling you into a place to say, hey, let's go for a walk together. Let's spend quality time. I want to hear from you, but I also want you to hear from me. Sometimes we go to God with all these lists of things we want from him, but we don't actually spend time to listen to the answer he wants to give us, to help us with the things of the list we've brought. It's like sometimes we go, God, da, 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 da. Ha, good on you, let's go. But no, God's called us into a love affair. God's called us into a relationship 
where it's a giving and a receiving. And what does that look like? It changes in all different stages of our life and in different times of our life, God calls us to pray in different ways. But whatever way you're praying, whatever thing you're doing, it should be a relationship of a love exchange. And that looks different to each and every one of us. What does a love exchange look like? Sometime like this morning, this morning, uh, this morning he reminded me, my dad died about six years ago and he was a treasure to my life. And this morning in that little bit of a moment that God was kind of giving me a parable, it was my dad who was the image of God in my life. And i got to tell you, it just melted my heart. It was such a blessing to me. And I'm just, I just felt so rich that he shared that with me that I'd never seen before. And I was blessed. And my heart was, grew a little bit more with the presence of God. See, actually prayer enlarges our heart to receive more from God. He's not wanting something from you. He's wanting to give you beauty into areas that you thought were dry and barren. He was bringing hope into areas that you thought were impossible. And we've all got those things. And that's okay. Jess, you just do whatever. <laughs> Jess is going to be one of our wonderful sharers this morning. I'm going to invite a few people up to just to talk about, three people up, just to talk about how in one stage of their life, how they pray. Because we looked at the, the premise of some people don't know how to pray. So we're going to look from a few different types of people, what prayer means to them and how they pray. At one way of praying. Beth, why don't you come on up? Beth is a real treasure and a prayer warrior. She's full of the word of God. And uh, she's passionate about prayer. And I just wanted to, she's going to share a little bit about prayer, what prayer means to her, and also how she prays. This is a bit of an instruction of just looking how other people do it. We talk a lot about prayer, but often we don't model it. So today we're going to model it. Is that all right? A few different types. No, you can hold it. <laughs> okay, we're going to stand together. Hi. This is something I don't like doing, getting up here, but I just totally agree with what you have said this morning. It just so echoes in my heart. And just praying over the children like we did this morning, it's just beautiful. That's what God would like us to do. And um, prayer can be talking to the Lord at any time of the day. But for me, I have set a time a particular time in the day because it suits me at my age group that I can spend this time in the morning, first thing in the morning. But for those of you, it may be at different times of the day. And, um, and my prayer life, my time with the Lord has changed over the years. When you're a young mum, life is busy. And I just started off with five or ten minutes a day. Well wasn't quite that consistent then <laughs> but it grew it's grown over the years the time that I have with the Lord and I really treasure that and, um, and and as I said praying talking to the Lord as you said it's a two-way conversation it's just as important to listen to the Lord as us praying to the Lord and um, and it's also worshiping and praising the Lord for the things that he's done for our, in our lives. And, and I like to start off with, good morning, Lord. I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for the good night's sleep that I had. Thank you that I'm warm, that I've got food every day. It's been having a grateful heart. It's thanking the Lord. And... Um, yeah, as I said, expressing my gratitude to the Lord. And sometimes if I don't know how to pray about something, 
this is the best manual you'll ever have is the Bible. I like to model my prayer around the word, the scripture, because the scripture is alive. It's living. And, and God says, as we pray his word over a situation, it does not return to him void, but it accomplishes that which it was sent forth to do. So you can't get anything more powerful than to pray over a situation. It might be using scriptures to pray for your health. Declaring God's word over your life is so important. And when you're praying and you're believing for something, um, it's also important to keep a check on your mouth too that you're not counteracting that with a negative statement. I'm not saying you can't ever not talk about the situation, but it's declaring God's word and holding fast to it. And... Um, yeah, that's probably it. Do you want to but model that for me? Come on. Well, the other thing I wanted to say is it takes discipline to have a prayer life and spending that time with the Lord and um, being consistent even when you don't feel like doing it. And we all have days when we're like that. So how do you want me to model the prayer? Just pray for your kids. Oh, yes. Now, that's a good example what you prayed this morning. So, um, maybe pray for um, something with your passion. Because we've done the kids, so. We've done the kids. Um, gee, I hadn't come up with that answer. Okay, so pray <laughs> for your family. Okay, well, I do. What I do every day is I pray Psalm 91 over my family. And, um, yeah, Lord, thank you, Father. I cover each of my children and I cover each of everyone that's here with their, their families, Father. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Father, you station your angels about them to keep and protect them in all their ways. And Father, I declare that I am blessed. We are blessed coming in and blessed going out. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy to me every day and to my family. I praise you. I bless you, Father. You are the great I am. I love you, Father. You are beautiful and wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Woohoo! Sometimes you get a scripture and it runs over in your life and you just start to pray it out. There's some beautiful prayers that you can, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Psalm 23, Psalm 91, and they'll, you know, impact that season you're in. Pete, Thomas, would you please come on up? A father of the house, dad, man of his, and again, we're just looking at different people. Everybody prays a little bit different. And it's, it's not always, it's just who you are and where you are today. And God will meet you where you are. It's not about being perfect. It's not about having the right words. It's having a heart that extends to him and allows him to impact you. Good morning. Um, when B approached me about this, I initially thought, no, that's not for me. I'm no prayer warrior. Um, there are plenty of others who um, could do a much better job. But I thought, well, my prayer life is still relevant and maybe it'll be an encouragement to someone here this morning. Um, many years ago, I um, came across a little book um, that was written by a monk and it's called The Practice of the Presence of God. And it was written in 1691 not 1961, 1691, over 300 years ago, quite remarkable. And Brother Lawrence was just a humble cook in the monastery and he learnt an important lesson while he was working there in the kitchen, dreaming of bigger things and bigger opportunities in God's service. But he learned that where God had placed him in the kitchen there was still a place of great importance. He learnt that lesson, that time spent in communion with the Lord 
should be the same, whether it's bustling around in the kitchen or on his knees in prayer. It's not a matter of, of one or the other, it's, it's all together. He discovered the greatest secret of living in the kingdom of God here on earth. And isn't that what we want to learn? The greatest secret of living in the kingdom of God here on earth, it's the art of practicing the presence of God in one single act that does not end. So not compartmentalizing our lives and this little bit is for God and this little bit's for me and, and so on, but the presence of God to permeate our lives in just one single act of response to God. In other words, no matter what we're doing and where we are, we should live our lives with an open heart, aware of his presence and listening for his voice at the same time. When Cheryl and I were in our mid-30s, <laughs> that's a long while back, we felt God's call on our life to go to Bible college to help us um, be better equipped to lead a Bible study that we'd been asked to do in our local church. And so we took that step of obedience to go to Bible college, little knowing that it would end in three years of study and then a further six years working overseas in the Ivory Coast in West Africa. And all of this with three kids in tow. When we went overseas, they were 15, 13 and 10. And that little 10-year-old is my younger son, Ryan, who's here with his lovely family visiting for the weekend. Um, and we went overseas at a time when most people were bringing their kids home for education purposes and so forth. There's much more about that story I could tell you, but I won't do that today. Just a little incident that uh, I hope you've got time for, B. No stopwatch on me. <laughs> We, um, we worked in an international boarding school there in Africa, and it was in a very rural area. Closer? Woo. Very rural area, certainly not on the electricity grid. So we basically had 12 volt batteries for lighting and kerosene fridges for uh, refrigeration purposes in the property. And one fateful day, one of those kerosene fridges blew up, literally, caught fire, and uh, off the fire went through the buildings there. It resulted in the destruction of the majority of our kitchen, lounge and living areas in the uh, place where we worked. Thankfully it stopped before it could damage the school dormitories where there were about 50 kids who were being housed there at the time. But stopping the fire was no small feat. The only water supply we had was a tap in the laundry and buckets. And so we formed a, a bucket brigade, a chain of people passing bucketfuls of water down the line and emptying it on the fire. <laughs> and for me, that was incredibly challenging because I was a fully trained professional firefighter back in Australia, 10 years service, and all we could do was empty buckets of water on the fire. Thankfully, we did stop the spread of the fire before it could damage those dormitories. And it was obvious that God's hand was definitely on us because buckets of fire, could you imagine doing that yourself? It would never work, but God was very gracious to us. And we breathed a collective sigh of relief when the fire was out and uh, we surveyed the damage and saw that it could be much worse than it really was. As well as practicing the presence of God, I also love the power of corporate prayer, joining together with fellow believers and um, petitioning God for things that we believe he wants us to be involved in. And Pete Dover's message a couple of weeks back spelt that out very clearly with the wellness farm up at Sassafras, how it became a reality against the odds, the provision of serious finances that came at the last minute to purchase that beautiful property that we, we use now. 
And we saw that in Africa as well, of course. And from the little mission school that had had this major fire disrupting the operating of its um, work there, news of that fire spread throughout the mission community and then back to home countries and churches of our workers and the students in the school. Now, you've got to remember this was way back in the dark ages, before the days of uh, internet, emails, social media. How on earth does uh, <laughs> messages get around back in those days? But the word got through. And over a period of months, we saw the Lord provide everything we needed, finances, materials, manpower, expertise, to rebuild what had been lost. But marvellously, we not only replaced what was lost, we were able to build a two-storey building in its place, twice the size of what it was before, with this lovely big meeting room where we could have our church services and conferences and other things there. So God provided not just what we needed, but even more from his abundance. What a great God we serve. Amen. Practicing the presence everywhere you go and everything you do, you can carry God's presence, have a heart, giving and receiving to him. Whatever we do, he invites, we invite him to come along. Our last wonderful treasure to come and share is Jess, beautiful young mum to our Gorgeous girls, Good faith and everywhere. faith and grace, faith and grace to important factors <laughs> yes. in the prayer sector, and um, she's going to share about prayer from a young mum's perspective and how important it is and how what that looks like. Yeah, thank you, B. Um, oh, thinking about what I was going to share, um, I think for me, um, prayer has always been a bit of a tricky subject to be honest um always sort of felt that I didn't fit um in the stereotypical prayer language or the way people usually pray um and I always sort of felt like oh what's wrong with me I can't pray or I didn't feel capable of um I suppose being in that space for a long period of time I read this book once when I was young and it was like basically saying Oh, if you can't spend an hour with God, don't follow him. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> it's very legalistic and I was, I just, it just really affected me. But then, you know, walking with God and just feeling his presence with me. Um, oh, that's Christmas. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that message was very harmful to me. But um, I realise now that... I've. It's been a journey of accepting me for me and how I connect with God. And for me, often it's through a worship song. So that's, that's usually my starting point. I'll be like, you know, looking after the girls and going through my day and I'll start having this burden on me and I'll like, okay, I'll start leaning in and asking God, okay, what are you wanting to tell me? What do you want me to do or pray or whatever? And often God will give me a song and, you know, I'll just play it on Spotify on my thing or whatever. And um, the lyrics, like, often are from scripture, often, like, inspire that feeling of, okay, God, I think I know what you're trying to tell me here. And I lean into that song and I sort of add extra, you know, because I know that scripture and you add extra stuff to it and you really press in and pray like that. That's... Because for me, music is life. It really, that's how I connect with God and that's how I lean into him a lot of the time and that's how I've gotten through some really, really difficult times in my life. Um, yeah, so that's me and, you know, I try to blame the girls for being inconsistent with stuff but honestly, I think I've always been <laughs> like that. Just not, yeah, I'm maybe a bit ADHD. I'm definitely dyslexic. So just, I suppose that's encouragement for people who struggle with being consistent, because I'm not. Um, but I think it's just having that attitude of being open to hearing God's voice through your day, whatever you're doing. Um, and if you feel that 
burden and feel that pressing on your heart and your spirit, just to lean in and ask God, what do you want to tell me, Lord? And often it's just the most beautiful, I love you. You are worth it. You are worth me dying on the cross for you. I want just to pour my love over you and just to see your whole world flip over whatever you need in your world right now. That's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to step into that area exactly where you are and just hold your hand or even carry you if you don't have the strength to walk. Just be there for you because that's who he is. That's his heart. He loves you. He died for you. And any other voice that tries to tell you you're not good enough, that's not him. That's not Jesus. And that's where, like, you know, not always feeling like I was good enough, not feeling like I was worth it. Um, Yeah, he's proven me wrong time and time again and the amazing things that he's done in my life from devastating disappointment, death, heartbreak to new life (laughs) and, um, yeah, just redemption, you know, that's what he's all about. He wants to redeem the things that Satan has robbed from you and that's, that's, yeah, he's amazing. So, that's me. (laughs) (laughs) So, prayer is that connection wherever you are and whatever you do. It's the conduit of a relationship. It's that giving and receiving. We've got to sometimes just wait and listen because he's wanting to lead you into that place of being valued and treasured and appreciated. And there's a scripture that says he lavishes his love upon us. And a prayer is a time when God wants to lavish his love upon you. However that looks like. One of the things I found with prayer, one of the hindrances, is being patient. Anybody else challenged with patience? Speed of things, everything's speeding up. And I I love God because, you know, when he talks about, he says, I am love. This is what God says, I am love. And when you read in 1 Corinthians 13, the first things he talks about is love is patient. Don't we need, aren't we grateful that God's patient with us? Love is kind. Oh, I'm so grateful that God is kind and patient. So when we're coming to a new relationship and a deeper relationship with God, he's patient and kind in that process. He's patient and he's trying to bring you into a greater understanding so he can expand your heart to receive more of him. And when we receive more of him, we kind of walk more and more in his likeness, which is just awesome. Prayer is a balance of speaking and it says ask. It's not not a problem to ask for God, to seek Actually, it says consistently ask, consistently seek, consistently knock. Knock on that door. Hey, hey. Have you ever tried, um, you know, we've got um, young grandkids, Pete and Meg, and um, the kids, when they want something, they just don't stop, do they? They knock on the door. Hey, hey, hey. And he's like, just a second, just a second. Hey, 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 hey. Because they just want it. And God says, come like little children. Don't be afraid to be silly and goofy. Come like little children. Hey, God, have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Have you got? He's, he's okay with that. He's not going to lose his patience. Remember, he's patient and kind. He's willing to meet you right where you're at. And I have a... It's, it's just such a beautiful thing. We had... Um, When I went to uh, Perth, I I lived about 13 years in Perth and I worked at a wonderful ministry over there. And when I went to interview um, for that job, it was a two-week interview. No, sorry, a week interview. Two weeks? Maybe it was two weeks. 
Anyway, they actually wanted me to go and work in all these different departments of the church and to see if um, I would fit. I was the first person to work with them that hadn't kind of come up through the ranks. And they weren't so sure about me. But anyway, <laughs> they put me to, to live with a lady over there, which is just a woman of prayer. And I used to look at her. She was just, she's such a humble just passionate about Jesus, passionate about prayer. And I'd lived the, probably about four years with Annie off and on. And she, her passion for God was just, it, it, it inspired me that I could connect with God so beautifully as she did. And it inspired me what this, this love, almost rapture relationship looked like on a very first-hand basis. And I was like, God, I want that. But there's one thing to say, I want that, but then it's another thing to seek first. It takes some seeking. It takes some action. It takes some commitment. It takes, oh, to running to him and not running from him. And there's that, that balance. Mother Teresa... She's a hero of mine. And I've been reading this book called The Simple Path. It's so profound at her love for Jesus. I've just, I'm absolutely, uh, the simple way, the main key verse, the part, not a verse, it's, a, it's like a poem. And this is what the poem says. It says, the fruit of silence is prayer. Stay with me. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. And I, over the last couple of months, I've been going over this. Because it's easy to read, but actually it's quite a journey of not only walking through it then again again and what does it mean that the fruit of silence is prayer this is my sharing is that sometimes and for me in this last few months actually to quieten my life down to listen has been one of the hardest challenges I've got this expectation that 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 but just to quiet myself into a silent place. If it's sitting in a chair, if it's walk, sitting beside a little river, whatever that looks like, to silence myself. And what bubbles up on the inside of me is gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for meeting me in this place. Thank you for being my daily bread yesterday and for being my daily bread today. And silence is a profound thing. It's not the absence of, I mean, it's the absence of noise, but it's actually actively listening to the heart of God. And I come out of those times of silence so rich and so blessed and people, you know, people must look at me, I just feel like a, I'm just, I feel so rich, so overwhelmed and so delighted and so cherished and adored. And it's a thing that I've had to practice because it's hard to silence your life. It's hard to silence your mind, silence any fear or anxiety. But in that silence, he is so beautiful. And I'm starting to understand, I, I've always been a very strong prayer. I pray the scriptures, I pray in tongues, oh, I'm loud and I'm bold. I have no problem being that, that's natural to me. But to be silent, oh, it's proving to be the greatest treasure of my life. Because it's him, it's in that moment that I hear what my heart longs for. And you know what that is? Him. Seeking first his kingdom it's that asking it's that seeking 
there's beauty to it and it's there's a persistence heart in in Matthew 6 21 which is just after the Lord's Prayer or a little bit after it says your heart will always pursue what you value as a treasure your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure I've started to call prayer my treasure my treasure encounter with God it's my, it's our interaction, it's my, our pillow talk, if you, if, per se. And I treasure that. And my heart more and more is longing for that place, a deeper, deeper relationship. And we're all in different to- stages, and that's okay. I wanted to inspire you this morning that God's waiting for you at a place to lavish upon you more. More, more of him, more beauty, more riches, so you can be his shining light to others around you. And that you just shine just because you carry who he is. I, um, I really didn't look at the time when I started. Have I gone too long? Have I gone too long? This is one thing I was just going to leave you with. The the image that God showed me this morning about prayer, it was a story about my dad, like I said. And years ago, and this is is the revelation of prayer this morning. We went surfing at Kuta Reef. It's a beautiful left-hand, goofy foot wave. And it was a big day. So we caught the boat out. And Dad had taught me to surf when I was a little girl and built my confidence in this area. But it was a beautiful wave, a good six, seven foot, beautiful bank. Anyway, and I, I'd watched my dad surf it, and um, he was on a ski and I was on a board. Anyway, this beautiful set came through, and he caught the first wave. And, I, I was, and then I caught, I think, the last, the, the third or the fourth wave. And I was heading, we, we'd been surfing for so long because it was so delightful. If anybody's a surfer, it was probably at the almost two hour mark but it was so good you just couldn't stop it didn't no matter how exhausted you were it was the perfect day for surfing and it's to this day it's still my perfect day anyway I caught this wave and it was beautiful and I, you, know, you know when you do something and you can do no wrong I mean it, it was a cutback it was this and right at the end of the wave there was this tube or this barrel and I'd never caught like something like this I could almost stand in it And I was racing through this this beautiful barrel of a wave. And it was just, this is the best. I'm I'm saying this out loud. This is the best. And I came out of the wave. And when I came out of the wave, I could see my dad over there because he'd caught the few waves before. And he was waving at me. He's waving at me. And I thought he's saying, good on you, B. It's the best you've ever done, you know, because that's what you expect dads to say. And he's waving at me. But because I didn't have my glasses on because I'm surfing, I can't see. I could just see this movement. And he's yelling at me, get off! Get off! And I'm just, "Ah," you know. (laughs) And he's trying to warn me of danger. We'd been surfing so long, the tide had changed, and the second reef has been exposed. And I've come out, instead of getting off like he said, because I thought, I thought I'm going to show him, I'm going to do a beautiful top end turn. And I came around and I'm coming up for the second. And then I realise, well, I didn't realise then, the wave had sucked up all the way from the reef and I'm at the bottom just, and there's no water. There's just rock reef. It's not coral, it's, it's a rock reef. And I'm, I've got... Six, eight feet, that's from the back. So I've got about 10 feet of water to get through, hopefully to not be crushed on this reef. My dad's just sitting over there watching, thinking, brother Laba, probably praying. (laughs) And I I decide to dive through this wave and I get my torso through, my board, I couldn't grab it, but my legs and my board brought me down and I literally came down off a peak of a lip good six foot wave, crash straight with the water on top of me onto a bare reef. So I cut all up one side of my body and I was, thank goodness it was the fourth set, fourth wave in the set so there wasn't a, na- a wave straight behind it. 
So the wave settled and my dad's yelling at me. And I could see him because, you know, this is the impact zone. And sometimes we get caught in the impact zone, don't we, guys? We think things are too good and we get a little bit extra confident and we go over. And I could see my dad. He's on his ski and he's over to the side. He's like, run to me. Now, run to me. And I got up because I was dazed because of the, the impact and I'm bleeding. And he just says, yell at me, run to me. To me. So I remember picking up my, just the nose of my board and I'm running across a rock reef. So my feet are getting cut, but I'm realising there's another set coming and I only have a very limited time in this impact to get off this reef to safety. And my dad's at safety and I'm not. And I grab this board and I'm running, sprinting. The, you know, the water's about to hit. I'm running across, cutting feet. And I get to him and I just dive off this reef into the water because I needed to get out of the impact zone. Anybody surfers here? You know that? All right. And I think sometimes when we're in trouble, we think God's judging us. Like you should have heard, listen to me. You should have done this. But he's not. He's yelling at you, run to me. Run to me. Run to me. I'm your safety. Run to me. I will care for you. Run to me. And I will bring you through. And that's our prayer. It's that running to him, not from him. Now we got, we got through and dad cared for me and pulled the coral out. I mean, the, the, all the stuff out of my hip and I was munted. Cut. I've still got a good solid 50% hole in my hip scar from that wonderful experience. As I was this morning praying, and I just want to say God's calling to you. Run to him. Seek him. He's got this. He'll take care of this. Doesn't matter about your mistakes. Doesn't matter about you missed it. It's not about that. It's about how he will restore you both together. So, Father God, I just thank you for your goodness for your amazing mercy and grace upon us all. And I pray as we go about our week and everything you've called us to do here on earth, that, Father God, that we'd seek you first. You're the very best version of ourselves. You're the very best part of me. I'm so grateful for you in my life. You're the beauty in my life. You're the hope in my life. You're my grace and my, my delight and my joy. Thank you for loving me in spite of myself. Thank you for running after me. Thank you for being those open arms and calling me to yourself. And Father God, I just pray as we, as we go about today, I just pray that you'd continue to speak to each and every one of us and that we'd have the courage to listen the patience to listen and also to be faithful for what you've called us to. I thank you and I pray that you are glorified in all that we do today and every day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So as we go today, God is good and he adores you. Amen. If anybody would like some prayer, I'd love to pray with you. But um, have a wonderful week. Know that we're praying for you. Pray for you guys daily. Because you know what? I truly believe as a collective family, God is just doing such amazing stuff to us and through us here at Salt. Bless you. Amen.